I just bought the Lego Harry Potter Hogwarts Castle and Grounds. It's set number 76419 with 2,660 pieces and one minifigure inside. It's a $170 set that is filled to the brim with small details and Easter eggs from Harry Potter that we're going to be going through in today's video to find out if you should spend $170 of your own money on this set. And if you decide you want to buy this, please do so with the product integration on YouTube. Opening the box, you'll find lots and lots of numbered bags. This was a very full box and a very thick package with your instruction manuals, two of them. They look very nice. And throughout the instructions, there's cool info about each section of Hogwarts and what it is while you build it. The lone minifig in this set is the Hogwarts architect. He's got Hogwarts in his right hand, a staff in his left hand, and nice overall printing. Although I gotta say the gold plate is a bit tacky. The gold plate is what basically allows you to attach this to the base of the Hogwarts castle diorama. And they set up two specific spots for him, one more centered and one way off to the left. And I gotta say, it just makes this whole thing look tacky. I think the minifigure is a nice inclusion, but I think putting him on top of the build is a no-go. It kind of ruins the look. Here's the finished build. Well, at least the bottom of it, where you can see some large gaps that give you an insight to what the inside looks like. Not very pretty. As you can tell, the whole plate is very strong, though, as I can pick it up by the very edge, and it will still stay together. Next to one of his spots, we have the printed Hogwarts Castle tile, and I gotta say, the trademark logo there really takes me out of it. Like, I understand needing to have it, but it looks a little bit tacky as well. Not as tacky as that gold plate, though. All right, we're getting him out of here for the rest of their view, but the entire base is the black lake here. You can see with the dark blue and lighter blue, that is clearly the water of the lake. And within the lake, we have the dumb strung ship, which looks awesome in this micro scale. It also is coming out of the water there with all of the white caps around it. To me, it looks like an advent calendar build, but better, and I do really like it. I think it's a very nice front piece for the castle build. The rock work behind it and throughout the build is excellent. You can see some crystal pieces in sand green being used to represent trees, as well as those ice cream cone pieces in dark green. Very cool looking. At the very bottom of the build here, we have the boathouse built with like 12 pieces. Looks real neat. And then there's a couple of pathways leading away from it. One in a tan color, one in a dark tan color. The dark tan leads to the Bubaton's carriage flying through the sky. Next, we have the Great Hall, and you can see on that shield piece, it is printed with a clock there. Just below that, we have the printed doorway and a courtyard. The Great Hall overall just looks phenomenal there, and it's built at a really cool angle. Just to the right of that, we have the Grand Tower, where you would find Dumbledore's office, but obviously in this micro scale, not something they can represent. On the back side of the Great Hall, we have the printed window. We've got more trees and pathway leading into another large building and courtyard area. There's a bridge with a small stream of water underneath it, leading across to the next section where you'll find some very nice printed window pieces and the astronomy tower, which also looks pretty great on this side. Although this side of it with all the holes and stuff looks a little bit weird because it's the backside of the Lego pieces, but they tried. Possibly the best micro build in the set has to be the Whomping Willow with the Weasley car atop it. Just hilarious looking there on the side of the castle build. Here we've got the greenhouses using a lot of cheese slopes to achieve a pretty cool look. You can see more of those printed window pane pieces and another door there. It's crazy how many printed pieces they used on this instead of stickers. I guess that's what you should get for $170, but with Lego these days, especially if this was like a Jedi temple, you know it would be stickers, but because it's the Hogwarts castle from Harry Potter, Lego gave it the extra love. I really like the way they use tiles on their side to create the wall for the castle on top of the hill there. Looks very cool. Over here, we've got the viaduct bridge, which looks very large, crossing the entire valley there. Very neat look. And that's pretty much everything on the outside of the castle, but Lego also included a few small rooms from inside the castle. First up, we have the Chamber of Secrets, and it's kind of hard to see back there, but there is a face peeking through because there's a minifigure head at the back. With a little more light, you can definitely see it, and it is creepy back there. The next room is the Devil's Snare and Chamber of Winged Keys. Not as exciting as the Chamber of Secrets to me, but it's there. It's nice. Here we've got our wizard chessboard, but it only has four pieces on each side, so it's not regulation. The next and smallest room is the final corridor from the first movie, and it has the Mirror of Erezed. Finally, we have the potions class, which looks really neat with the printed windows on the back wall. Then we have all of the potions on shelving. We've got a cauldron represented with the little gray stud and some tables with the brown tiles. Just an incredible room. 
I've run you through all the amazing details and the tacky looking figure, although like it's supposed to be gold, I get it. It doesn't mean it doesn't look tacky though, especially when you place it on the build, don't do that. But this Hogwarts castle and grounds, I think is a really neat collectible display set for Harry Potter fans and Lego fans alike. It's something I'd love to see more of from Lego Star Wars. Well, that's Lord of the Rings, Lego Star Wars, which I obviously do a lot of on the channel. But if you're into this, $170 might be a bit steep. This might be just one of those you wait for a sand on 20% off would get you somewhere down to like 140 and maybe you're just happier down there but for 170 I don't think it's entirely not worth it it's still just a hard pill to swallow so let me know what you think about it down in the comment section below I'm giving this one a 9 out of 10 and you can check out more Harry Potter set reviews on the end screen now